Welcome to Channel to Chaos. Today we're going to learn how to access and withdraw the elements of an array using a loop. Now, in the previous tutorial, we saw a way to store and access the elements of an array, but that was a really inconvenient way to do it. For example, if you have roll numbers, as I explained in the previous tutorial, roll numbers consist well, there are many roll numbers in a college or right in a class basically. So, they you need to store that in a sequence. In order to do that, we use a loop. So, I want to give you an example using the employee ID. Now, each employee has a specific and a unique employee ID. Alright, so each employee with its unique ID. So, in order to store this ID, I need to type in the hideous man that I showed you in the previous tutorial. But I think if there is a better way, using a loop. So, in a loop, for example, in a for loop in this case, we always use a particular variable to index through it like an i or an j or any variable basically so i basically use in my tutorials a variable i and i started from zero goes up to five i plus plus whatever that particular variable is known as the indexing variable now it is known as the indexing variable because it follows a particular index it follows a particular sequence it starts from a number and it goes up to that number so the example I'm going to show to you today is really important that you understand the main use of an indexing variable. Let me show it to you. Before that I'm going to declare an integer i and I'm going to use this particular variable this i as my indexing variable as I should demonstrate to you right now. So there you go. So I've got my basic loop created over here. i starts from 0 goes up to 5 and i++. plus plus. Okay, so it's gonna go five times. It's gonna go zero, then one, two, up till it reaches to five, and until the condition has been satisfied. That's how a for loop works, right? Now, let me say that I wanna insert the data. So I just type in a scanf, right? Scanf function. And I type in percent %i, just like a regular variable, and percent %of the name of the, uh, the variable, the array, basically and the indexing variable and the semicolon, don't forget that. Now as you can plainly see there's a, this bracket which represent that this is an array anything, any variable containing square brackets in the front that represents that's an array. So any programming language, it doesn't matter if it contains a squared bracket and it contains a number between those or even if it doesn't contain a number that means that's an array. It, it's not necessary to put a number between these two squared brackets it's optional but we specify that because we want a fixed length one that is something in the future tutorial so let's stay focused on this one so as you can plainly see I've typed in squared brackets i now I have typed in i over here as an indexing variable because there are multiple of them there are five of them available so I want to start from zero so it's going to start from the first index which is zero will go up to 5 according to this loop, right? So it's going to go in a sequence. It would first store the first one, then it will go to the second one, then third, then fourth, and so on. So if I run the basically this program, you will see that it's letting me to insert some data. I'm going to enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the program terminates because there's no other task. So basically I've stored five different variables using a loop, and it has been stored in the order of 0, 1, 2, as it is, okay? It starts from 0, it goes up to 5. Really that simple. So this particular variable is going in a particular index. It starts from 1 and it goes to the second one, then third, and so on. So it's it's following an index. It's basically like an index of a book. If you start from a top, you go from a sequence. You're searching for a particular topic. You see that first is, let's say, addition. Second is multiplication so on. So you're going in a particular sequence until you reach to your task. It's same over here. It's it's basically the logic that you need to use. So I'm just going to copy the same for loop over here, paste it over here. I'm going to print the variables that I stored in that array. Only thing that I need to remove is the ampersand. Do keep that in mind that the printf doesn't contain an ampersand and the scanf does contain one. We use an ampersand in order to store in a particular variable. This is pointing to this variable. Okay, so let's run this. You will see that it is asking for us to insert some data. So there you go, five variables, and it prints those five variables. 
So basically we are storing in the order from 0 to 5 in this array. This variable is known as the indexing variables because it navigates in a sequence in that particular array. It starts from 0, it goes up to the particular number that you have specified in the loop. It's really that much. So if an array consists of 5, 10, 15, any kind of elements, it would go through an index. It would go in a sequence, if you may. So anyway, this has been a channel to chaos. I hope you like this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. Thank you very much.